All right, guys. Well, I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome to our Thursday night. Uh, let's talk uh, Thursday night. Uh, what are we calling it now? Thursday night live. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Where we're having can candid conversations around uh, matters of the heart. Um, I really believe that's what it is because, you know, just in life right now, we got so many things going on. So uh, while our family is taking a little bit of a break from our Breakfast of Champions, we're making sure to stay connected on Thursday nights to come in to have family chat time. So uh, I'm excited to catch up with everybody to uh, see what's going on in, you know, everyone's world. And then also have a conversation tonight um, about this conversation called judgment. We're going to name this one, No <laughs> Judgment Zone. We're not going to have any judgment around here. And uh, I'm excited about it. What about you, Joe? You excited about tonight's oh, call? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I just look forward to what's being said and maybe a few things coming out of me need to be said. <laughs> oh, you have some thoughts on it. But yeah, it's. I think it's a very interesting topic and I think we're going to go somewhere with this. I just believe that. Yeah, I do too. I think even from the very night that somebody brought it up about having uh, a conversation around um, don't judge me, but teach me. Teach me. Uh, yeah. yeah, teach me. I thought that was a very interesting concept of thought. And um, and and we're, we're going to talk a lot about that tonight, about, uh, you know, where judgment comes from, um, you know, good and healthy forms of judgment and where we are supposed to be navigating around that. So I'm I'm excited to have the conversation then having the open discussion from everyone as to how they have kind of felt about uh, that topic because everybody has felt judged at one time or another, you know, uh, maybe, uh, you know, within family setting, sometimes you marry into families and you may feel a little judged maybe because you don't do things the way they do it. Uh, maybe you're the newbie on the block on your job and you feel a little bit of, you know, judgment on you there. You know, maybe people are, you know, sizing you up from the last person that was there or, you know, maybe sometimes even in your marriage, you may feel a little judged, you know, because maybe your family values and uh, family um belief system may be just a little bit different. So it's a lot of things that we could talk about around that. And the whole emphasis of tonight's call is to make sure that we bring our hearts and minds together on one accord and that we see things through the eyes of God, not necessarily making our opinion the opinion, but looking at it through the eyes of God and seeing what the Lord has to say about it and then allowing that to be the final uh, opinion for it all. And then we, <laughs> we can go to sleep on what the Lord said <laughs> and then make the proper adjustments around it. So I'm excited. Miss Regina, I see you in with us tonight. Want to say welcome to you. Look like you still at work over there. Is that correct? Yes, I work 10 to 8. So okay. okay. I've got a moment where I can, I might have to dip up and out, but I'm on, I'm trying. Okay, well, we're glad to definitely have you on here and love to hear the comment conversations from you as well. And because uh, everybody's got something valuable to talk about tonight. I believe we really do. So, uh, Mrs. LaDreva, good afternoon to you too. Good to see you, girl. She you got, got my hair all over my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I washed my hair, so I got curls, y'all. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, okay. We got you bad. I, I'm planning on being on, but we got bad weather out here. It's real, real bad. We got, they just told everybody to set shelter in place because it's like wind approved. So I'm going to be long as the wind, you know, flow over, but I'm here. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, you do definitely take cover over there. And you yes, ma'am. You have to get off. Be sure to do that. So, yes, Mrs. Felicia, how are you tonight, dear? You ready for tonight's conversation? Good evening again. I am. I um. I'm just <laughs> gonna uh, take down some notes, and if I have okay. something I want to share, I want to go ahead and be able to share that as well. But I am excited. 
because I okay. think it's a, a wonderful topic. Yes. I do too. I do too. Thank you so much, Felicia. I and uh, thank y'all so much for taking out of y'all busy schedules. You know, I know the, the day because I know my day gets very hectic. Seems like every time Thursday come, something always coming up to where I had to rush and, you know, do this and that. But I think it's so other days of our lives. It really is. It's just busy all the time. So, uh, but I want to thank everybody for joining in tonight. Miss Sheena Fight, we're good. Glad to see you, girl. I love that new picture that's up there. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. It's good to see all of you, Joe. But he always smiling and stuff. Yeah. And so it's good to see you guys. Amen. Well, it's good to see you too, Sheena. Look forward to uh, shared conversations with you as well. Uh, well, before we get started, I know the rest of the family will be on in in just a little bit, and we'll just have our conversation already uh, moving forward. Um, we're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer, and, and uh, then we'll kind of get this conversation kickstarted. We're going to kind of go back and recap over last week just a little bit, and then we'll jump into today's message and, um, you know, so that we can have some continued conversation moving forward. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, Father, we thank you once again for, you know, thank you for such a great day on today. Uh, thank you so much for, you know, even though we've been through some rainy days and maybe some windy days, you know, Lord, we can we can definitely sense your presence in the midst of it, uh, teaching us how to still be still, not get so busy, you know, with the course of the day. So, Father, thank you for intervening and supplying everything that we need, you know, to make it through life. Uh, Father, we ask your blessings upon tonight's call. Uh, we don't want to take the lead, God. You know, we want you to, you know, be the, the center uh, stage here. Uh, so, Father, I pray that you would govern the conversation in the direction that you would want it to go in, you know, because I believe the judgment belongs to you. Um, it does not belong to man. Uh, there, there are some conditional things that you have taught us to look for, you know, just to put a guard over our hearts. But I don't think that we have been designed to be judge and jury over anyone. So, Father, help us to uh, get our heart and mind together on one accord as it relates to you so that we can have better relationships with our loved ones, uh, with our, you know, co-workers, the people that we do business with every day. You know, because the, the essence of it all is to bring you glory. Uh, so, Father, we thank you already for it. Thank you for all of those that will be joining in with us tonight. I uh, want to wake them up, shake them up, bring them on in, Lord God. And thank you for the valuable conversation that will move forward. Uh, Father, open up our ears to hear what the Spirit has to say. Open up our hearts to receive, Lord God, your presence and even also the differences with others. And when it's all or when it's all over and said, said and done, God, help us to have a closer walk with you. We th thank you already for everything that you're going to do tonight in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. I want to welcome all of you that are just joining in with us. And we are looking forward to a great uh, conversation on tonight. Uh, the conversation, I kind of changed it up a little bit and called it No Judgment Zone. But I think the conversation was called Don't Judge Me, But Teach Me, you know, and, and I felt that one of our leaders actually gave that topic and I kind of felt it, you know, when they said it, uh, because a lot of times we can have a, a misconception of what may be going on in a person's life when, we're, when we really don't know, you know, really don't understand. And there's so many different scenarios to where we could have gotten something totally, totally, totally wrong, you know, and sometimes it takes, you know, sitting down and asking the right questions. So we're going to talk about those things tonight. But before we move further with that, I want to stop and thank Mrs. Ladriva Coston and Mrs. Uh, Benora Allen uh, for hosting the room on last week. And uh, what was their conversation topic? Uh, let, let me see if I can go back up to what it, what was it again, Ladriva? It was diversity and inclusion. We were talking about George Floyd. Diversity and inclusion with George yes, Floyd. Yes. yes yeah. So did anybody have any takeaways from that from last week that really stood out to you that kind of carried you through the, you know, through the week? Um, I know it's been what three years since all of that happened. Um, but anything that anybody found to be, you know, kind of 
um, I don't know, maybe still a revelation to you or still left a kind of, you know, a thump in your heart as to has things really changed, have things really changed? You know, anybody um, want to have kind of conversations around it before we move further? Ms. Marilyn, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. So I'll talk about it. I mean, me and Ms. Benora was just talking about, you know, different um, diversities in the world with the protests, you know, the schools are still going on. And, you know, we were just talking about different people. You can't judge people. This is leading up to the subject tonight. Yes. And we all different. You know, we all come from different backgrounds and diversities. And so um, it was very good. I mean, I took it into the workplace last week and this week and, and just um, it was just really good overall. It just shows that, you know, we all have a different background, but we have to love our fellow brother and sister, you know. We're here to help, not to discriminate, you know, different people, you know, things that they're going through in life. So that's what I got out of it. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, I think that was exactly uh, what was taking place. That was a judgment, you know, uh, one against maybe the way he looked, maybe the way, I don't know, maybe somebody had a different thought of, you know, maybe how he was carrying himself. I don't I don't really know all the details to it, but, you know, and even the officer uh, that was, you know, charged, uh, maybe there was a judgment call that took place with him. Maybe he saw things, you know, as I don't know, I'm going to take charge of tonight and I'm going to show him, you know, uh, who's running things. We we see that going on all the time. They, they may not say it out of their mouth, but they sure do show it in their actions that, you know, we don't mean as much to them as we should, you know, and sometimes God got to make a public uh, spectacle of them, you know, and let them know that I am in charge, whether you, what was that show, Lean on Me? Remember when, uh, uh, who was that? Uh, I forgot who the gentleman, he said that he was H-I-H-N-I-H-N-I-C. And uh, they had Negro in charge. Oh, yeah, the superintendent. Mr. Lewis. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Clark, no, that's right, Mr. Clark. Yeah, Mr. Clark said he was the H-N-I-C. And then the superintendent said, what did you tell him? He said, um, when he said something about popular belief, I'm the HNIC. <laughs> right. So, you may have thought... <laughs> so yeah. sometimes, you know, God had to do that to us. You think you in charge, but you really are not. You may not even be seeing this the way you should be seeing it. So, yes. Anybody else want to share anything that you may have pulled from last week's uh, conversation as well? Anybody? Mm -hmm. I think a lot is um, when you have situations like that, you really, what's revealed there is really the mindset of people. You know, mm -hmm. um, where the mind goes, the person goes. And whatever yeah. you feed, you become that. What are you feeding yourself? And whatever you feed yourself, sooner or later, you'll forget where you are and the truth will come out about you. Um, and that's the truth, yes. Yeah, when your actions, and you're like, oh, I'm out in public. Oh, yeah, we see you. You know, but, you know, you get so comfortable in that. But, you know, it's kind of like something you were saying earlier, Marilyn, when you was praying. And, and, and my thoughts so, was that, you know, we are here, we're not here to, pe to teach people what to see. We are here to teach people I mean, we're here to teach, not to teach people how to see. We're here to, to teach them what they need to see. They got to see mm -hmm. it through the eye, God's eyes. And how do mm -hmm. they do that? We have to be God in the earth school, yeah. see, doing things different than the world. And, you know, the world we're in right now, there's a whole lot of distractions. Yeah. Uh, and, and we have to feed the mind and starve the distractions and know what they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and in this particular situation we're talking about, you have people that look at that and they see things totally different depending on what's working between their ears and what's working mm -hmm. between their ears and their heart. Mm -hmm. and you see that. And it, and it was publicly displayed. That's all it is. 
And like you said, I think God revealed that to a certain degree to let people know if if you're wrong and you're a police officer, you will be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa. But and, and you know, you say God's just sad to take all that, but again, we have to realize we live in a fallen world. Yeah. Don't forget that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not saying we dwell on it. But it's obvious, it's falling, it's steady falling. But um, we have to be the opposite of that. And how's the opposite of that? We have to operate in love mm -hmm. and not in fear, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, those were some points that you kind of get from that. Amen. Yo, that made me think about judgment as a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. It really is, you know, the way you judge a thing you know, another person judges, you know, another way. And we have to be careful how we make things as absolutes in life. Like when yes. or um th this and that until it's in until it's you. Right. Until it's your child. And I think that's what happens sometimes when the law gets caught in the crossfire, they make a judgment call probably because of what they see the most out there. Maybe there are a lot of people that are, you know, you know, doing unjust things. And of course, that's why we have police officers so they can govern the law. But at the mm -hmm. same time, we are not, um, uh, we are not, um, um, we are, we are not, um, I don't know what word I want to use. Uh, we can't go against the law that we're right. trying to uphold. That right. judgment goes back and forward, a two-edged sword, meaning the same way that somebody else's child or somebody else's loved one uh, can um, be charged for something you can too, you know. Yeah. But I think sometimes people let things slip up under the radar. They get very comfortable and not realizing that he's talking about you too. He's not just talking about others. Police officers remind me of pastors uh, because they have been <laughs> called to oversee civil matters, different things like that, but also they are hold, held um, in a position of responsibility for you to uphold the law yourself. Don't just uphold the law for other people, making them obey the law, but you obey the law as well. It's the same thing within ministry, within churches. You can't just preach to the congregation and you not let that message hit you too. That's, That's right. judgment. That's a two-edged sword uh, with judgment. Sometimes people say things like, well, they're the pastor, but they are not, um, uh, they they don't get to defy the odds against what God has spoken, and neither do we. Nobody does. A parent and a child, there's a two-edged sword that goes there. That's why the Bible says that, you know, children obey your parents in the Lord, you know, because it's the right thing to do. He also tells uh, husbands, to treat your wives even as the the weaker vessel within the house of um, uh, wives uh, submit to your husbands. There's always some type of judgment or some type of a uh, ruling that goes back and forth, so that everybody can be accountable to something. I think this keeps us out of a place to where we try to bring vengeance upon someone. Uh, because we felt like uh, maybe they did some unjustly to us, unjust to us, and then and we try to get them back with something. But in essence, you got to remember God is holding them with the same measure that they tried to hold out to someone else. And he holds us accountable for those things as well. So we have to be very, very careful of how we go about judging any situations because sometimes they will become civil matters sometimes they will become criminal matters because if you go too far with something and start taking things in your own hand as if you are not subject to that same law uh that's where i think god god you know that 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 ruling comes in it's like okay i got to come in and set the order with this because neither one of you are uh, uh, maybe right in this matter, or one may be right, and one of you may have uh, a superiority in this, and it makes the world think that your opinion is going to be greater than the lesser one here. But where God comes in, that's where prayer comes in as well uh, to come in to say, you know what, 
I'm going to be like that woman that went before that unjust judge, said that she kept going before him over and over again. And then the unjust judge just finally said, just give her what she wants, uh, because unless she comes to bother us later on. So I think that God does bring, you know, order into a matter. So um, anybody else tonight? Thank you, Joe. Um, we're looking forward to a great conversation tonight, y'all. We are. Anybody else want to share? We're kind of highlighting last week's message first before we move into the one that we're in right now. Um, any thoughts from anyone, you know, that you guys may have? Or even maybe on the matter of judgment, you know? The conversation piece of judgment. Yeah, yeah. Miss Merlin, I was trying to have a hard time finding a mute button. Jump to different screens. But <clears throat> I just remember, like, when you were just talking about that, like, about how the preacher... Because we encountered that um, back when I was younger, when we were uh, in church, like the preacher, like like my mom, like she had bought me like a lilac colored dress and I had like some lilac hope, stockings. He had a preacher preached on me. I think I was in like seventh or eighth grade. Um, he preached on me. I did my little Easter program. I remember he preached on me about, you know, wearing, said like a jazzy bell, wearing colored hose, like you weren't supposed to wear red and you weren't supposed to wear like colored hose and stuff. And then um, it was just one of, that was one of the things. But then like another thing was like, he was saying like Christmas was um, pagans or whatever. So like we wasn't allowed to have a Christmas tree. So what my mama would do is she would decorate like our fireplace mantle and then just like put presents there. And then mm -hmm. like we wasn't allowed to go to the fair because it was of the world. But then my mom, like she had to, to make a, a decision because she found out like we just happened to be riding by, you know, you pass by their house, they got a Christmas tree up. <laughs> These kids might not go to the fair, but they go to Six Flags. So what's the difference? Yeah, yeah. You know, so I do, I dealt with that, like, firsthand, you know. So it's it's real, you know. It's yeah. not always, it's, and, it's, and it's a shame, but, I mean, we, we dealt with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 think, I think that has gone on uh, within work settings, church settings, family settings, all those kind of things where people made judgments about different things but they didn't call out what they were doing. You know, mm -hmm. they saw the wrong, what they what the Bible says, you need to get the speck out of your own eye before you start, you know, messing around with somebody. You'll get the beam out of your eye before they you try to get it out of someone else. That's why it's not good to judge something before time, before mm -hmm. you really get an understanding as to, you know, what's really going on, you know, in a person's, in a person's life. And then um, I think it's very important as leaders that you make sure that you qualify yourself or God mm -hmm. qualifies you before getting in positions to where you're overseeing certain things. Because sometimes people like power, you know, people like, you know, be, be in positions of authority uh, to where they can have the final say, maybe they're trying to uh, get back at somebody for something somebody did to maybe one of their family members a long time ago, and you just happen to be in the way. That has happened a whole lot. You just became kind of like the scapegoat uh, to somebody else's issue that they've been having. And now they're creating a problem for everybody because they're judging a situation without really getting a good understanding about it. So that's a good one, Regina. We definitely want to talk about that tonight. That's a yeah. great and, one. And, and, a good, and thank you for being thing. bold enough to say yeah. it too, Regina. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but like I tell my employees, I have two little phrases that I say, here at work and at home. One of them that I used to mainly tell squeak a whole lot, yeah. don't throw stones when you live in a glass house. And wow. I tell them at home and at work, sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around somebody else's. So That's right. I, I make sure that I try to live by that at work and at home. Mm -hmm. so. That's true. That's so, though, I know that's a song. I know that's a phrase, but that's true. You've got to learn yeah. how to sweep around your own you know, house, um, you know, I remember, and I know we probably won't get into the deep conversations tonight. I remember when we were younger and, you know, you growing up in um, kind of, I'm not going to say it was a strict household, but it was it, on, on my, on, on my father's side, it was strict religiously on my mom's side. It was strict 
with judgment. Um, everybody was judging if you were not of a certain caliber, if you were not of a certain color sometimes. Even my grandfather used to do that. He, he had this thing against dark people. Uh, he didn't really care for, um, he didn't care for my dad because my dad was a darker version. Uh, there were a couple of other of, of his children that married darker gentlemen. He didn't care for them, even though he had some dark children. He didn't care for his dark children. And people just make those types of judgment from whatever, you know, what's in their heart or whatever. And it, it is sad because you can leave a stigma behind on people. And Regina, you know what? I think about how that could have been so hurtful and could have caused you to make some decisions about um, how you engage uh, with people in the church, too because of one situation that took place with someone and you start thinking that everybody in the church is going to be judgy, you know, like that. But I do believe long ago, they were, depending on what denomination or background you came from, there were a lot of stipulations, a whole lot of things. I was listening to, uh, if y'all ever want to go back and hear some hardcore religious stuff, listen to Bishop Noah Jones. He's telling some stories now. He said that when they were younger, he said they scared him to death. Yeah, Pentecostal. They scared him to death. Uh, Bishop Noah Jones said if you walked in the church and you had lipstick on, he said his mama would meet you at, <laughs> would meet you at the door with a, a with a tissue. <laughs> I will wipe your mouth. I will wipe your mouth. He said they had you so scared. They told him, I think what Regina was talking about, certain things that you couldn't go to the you couldn't go to the skating rink. You couldn't go to the bowling alley. You couldn't do all of that kind of. He said they had them so terrified that if they did anything wrong, he said even if I looked at a woman, I thought God was gonna poke my eyes out, you know. But that was just the you know the religious rhetorics that they had, and a lot of us have been governed by that, and and some of us scared to make a move. In any kind of way, some of us have some judgments as it relates to sex because of stuff that people taught us, <laughs> told us, you know, you know, about, you know, you whether you're a Jezebel or whether you are, you know, you you just, you ain't no good for nothing. <laughs> but it's best to go back and check out what the word of God has to say about it. Yeah, just plumb deep bondage. And some people can't even find their way up out of that stuff because it was, it was such a stronghold. It was like, uh-uh, you uh -uh, you don't touch me don't look at me don't say nothing to me you know because i'm gonna get pregnant <laughs> but that's the stuff that they did long ago so anybody else before we jump into this conversation <laughs> yes marilyn yes ma'am <laughs> i was just thinking about what regina was saying by judgment i remember being little and i used to got being called olive oil because i was so skinny i was like thin yeah. they said oh look at olive oil look at olive oil and then look at olive oil now <laughs> I, had kids. I had kids. I had a little weight, but I was just being yeah. a little, just being a little kid, just being, just being teased about being olive oil, mm -hmm. and that used to bother me to this day. I think about that little saying olive oil, olive oil, you know. But yeah, yeah. If, you know, even today, you know, people still can be mean. You know, my kids, I tell them all the time, you know, if they have any issues by being bullied, come to me. You know, yeah, because you know, kids can be cruel as well. I think Mr. Cole talked about that last week, but her son did a good deed as well. You know. Just standing up, so I would just think about that. But <laughs> it was time I began to be, and I used to be kind of olive oil, so but not yeah. now. I, I think we. I think we all done had some names. It's like, what would you do that? Why would you say that to somebody? But, you know, that's, and then later on I learned, that, you know, people just did what they knew to do. Sometimes people just wanted to make people laugh. Sometimes people were teaching back what other people talked to them. They didn't go back to see if that stuff was right or how that was affecting people. And I think the, the more we have grown um, out of therapy, <laughs> I think we had to go to therapy for stuff like that stuff. And as we've gone through therapy, we have gone back to the word of God, you know, to where it says with all you're getting, make sure you get a good understanding about things. So um, anybody else tonight want to kind of share? We're talking about, we're kind of recapping from last week's conversation and then jumping into the conversation on judgment as well tonight. Anybody else? Miss Marilyn, this is Chick. Yes. Hey, Chick. Hey, hey, everybody. I wanted to uh, talk about judgment. You spoke yesterday 
morning on something and I didn't get to listen to it to this afternoon. And it made me think of how my family will act sometimes. They'll be like, well, here come the church girl. Or, you know, they act differently around me, which I'm okay with because to me, it gives respect um, for the younger people anyway that see that there's a lot of things that I don't allow or that I don't uphold, but yet I've been careful about um, being quick to give my opinion because mm -hmm. it seems more like judgment when I give an opinion because they expect different from me. Uh, they expect me to hold them to a higher standard already. So when I voice something and it's against what they're doing, they feel like I'm passing judgment. So I've been careful about uh, saying things to people. I've actually got a lo um, lot quieter um, in even giving an opinion because I realized that that's how people feel about me. They they want to think that I'm judging them. And I, I want to go back to when I had my 50th birthday last year. My family was so surprised to see me coming in dancing, especially to 50 Cent. They were like, mm -hmm. this church girl? And I'm like, but y'all are my family. How did y'all not know? Well, the kids that I have raised, they was like, oh, yeah, chick loves to dance. We expected that because they were around me. So they didn't feel like my cousins um, that don't really see me, that thinks I'm so churchy, they were like, man, you blew us away. We had no idea you would come in dancing and that you even listened to that. And I'm like, y'all, it's me. This, I, I'm still a chick. I don't, I want to do the right thing and I want to live holy, but I love to dance and I love people. So that kind of put me in a way of who did y'all think I was? Who, and, and were you judging me? Because mm -hmm. I still like to have fun, but when people are not with you or around you, then they do have these opinions or think certain things about you. And like I said, I'm okay either way. I'm just learning to keep my mouth closed uh, when it comes to what people may feel like is judgment. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I'm there with you on that one. Um, and I, I don't know what where, where this has come from, Chick, but... Uh, I've been like that here recently too. I'm I'm very careful as to what what I say uh, to the family now because I'm noticing, at least I feel like I could be wrong with that. Uh, that there's been some judgment as to uh, uh, whether um, Marilyn thinks she's all of that, or and sometimes when you even talk about the things that God has done for you in your life. I'm noticing that um, people looking at me kind of funny now. And uh, for a minute, it was um, kind of um, toying with me a little bit because I have worked so hard to, um, you know, what they say, try to be all things to everyone and uh, accepting people for who they are. And all I really wanted them to do was accept me for who I am, too, just because I have a strong stance about how I feel about God. Um, that does not mean you have to have that same stance with that uh, in the same way that I respect you on what you believe. I just wanted the same thing, but I'm realizing that it's not happening like that. And I'm learning to readjust. I did a message this morning. Uh, on that about guarding your heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. I have to guard my thoughts so that my thoughts not go into any form of judgment um, at the same time. Yeah, I think that's a lot of it too. I, I think a lot of what people are doing is showing uh, you um, where their insecurities are sometimes being around you uh, brings out the flaws in me. And that's not what it's supposed to do. And I want to say this to us all. Uh, let's be let's be mindful of how we uh, handle situations like that because you could easily go into a defensive mode. You know, either they accept me for who I am or not. But I, I don't, I don't want to take that approach. I don't want to throw fuel on the fire. I want God to give me a more excellent way to go about doing things because I got to check myself, Lord, is there something that I'm doing that's making people feel like that? I, I want to check me first 
and, and it may not be anything, but I'm going to go back to check to see if it's anything that I'm doing. Maybe I am, you know, too boastful. And a lot of that could have come from us being in Breakfast of Champions. That's what we do. We talk about, you know, God, we are very um, uh, adamant about what we're doing. But when we get off that line, everybody's not as adamant like that. And a, a lot of people are not even really trying to govern their lives in that matter. So, you know, we're having to be a little bit more watchful and because the Bible does say he that wins souls is wise. So I, I'm taking that different approach. I do see it. I do know exactly what Chick is talking about and that does not feel good at all. But I'm not going to hide who I am nor what God has done for me and the blessing that's on my life just so that I make somebody else feel good. I'm not going to do that. You know, if anything, the Bible says you you should provoke people to jealousy that they may want to live life differently. So I get that. I get it. Um, anybody else? That was That's a good one to talk about tonight, uh, Chick. Great one. Anybody else? Anybody else? One thing I don't want us doing is acting like them. I don't want us throwing retaliation out on anybody. Cause I hear people doing that kind of stuff, you know, like when you just, if you can't accept me for who I am, no, we our 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 um, uh, stance as a child of God is to get along with people. It's to try to get along with people. And, and there is no justification for not trying to get along with people. God does not, it does not matter what they think about you, but it does matter what you think about them. And when you are expressing yourselves, what's in your heart going to come out of your mouth. And if you're not careful of the things that go within your heart, within the time that you could be witnessing to someone, there's going to be another fiery judgment that comes out on there. Well, you can't talk about nobody. Look at you. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to go tit for tat. And that's not what God has asked us to do. So I'm I'm excited to get into that that conversation too as well. Um, anybody else before we move forward into it? Y'all feel free to keep throwing your comments out there because we're gonna we're gonna talk about these things in just a little bit. I have a comment, um, Marilyn. Um <clears throat> mastering yourself, mastering the others is strength. Mastering yourself is power. Mm. So in situations like that, they really want to pull you out of who you are. Yeah. But you, but it's it's like a saying, if a person brings you a gift and you don't accept that gift, who does that gift stay with? It stays with the person that brought it because you didn't accept it. It's not a part of who you are. So if somebody bring you nasty things and say certain things, as long as you don't respond to it, it stays with the person that's Thank saying you. all that. Mm -hmm. Because they, people like that want to get you in to where they are. Mm -hmm. But you have to stand steadfast, armored with the things of God to know the trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later, they will stop bringing it to you because they can't get a response out of it. They can't get the, let me say they don't get the response they want. Mm -hmm. They want to say, you know, he not so as spiritual as one thought he was. Or she not as spiritual. You know how people are. We, the one thing we know is we know the way people are. And they come to test that, that they don't understand or they're trying to destroy that. And sometimes, you can be in a setting and don't say anything and make people uneasy. Yeah, that's true. And it, it, it's, it's um, I think the, you know, some somebody said the demons and the demons and them recognize the God in you. Yeah, that's true. You know, so I just say in some settings, you don't really have to say much. It's just something within you exudes out. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, you know, it's like you said, you, you're not going to deny the God in you, but I don't have to come up in there speaking anything, you know, uh, and, and stand within myself. So I just want to make that comment. <clears throat> That's good, Joe. Um, it's such a thin line 
between mm -hmm. judgment. That's why I said we call this no judgment zone tonight. Uh, that This is what's going to make the difference between uh, those that are really walking with Christ. He said they will know you um, by your by, by your works. You know, people are people are know you by, you know, I can't remember what the scripture is. But you you're known by your the conduct. Fruits. Say fruits. it again, Faith. The fruits that you bear. That's it. You're gonna be known by the fruit that you bear. And that's what we want to do. We want to be great fruit bearers within this ministry and with everything that we do. It it may it may cause you to muzzle your tongue because you know, if it's nothing righteous going to come out, you got to know that was a trick of the enemy to get mm -hmm. you into a conversation, to get you thrown all off. And so sometimes we have to learn how to deny ourselves getting that last lick. Mm -hmm. Y'all know how we do. We're going to get the, you ain't going to be talking to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> all of us have done it before. <laughs> you know, Miss Marilyn, I was just thinking about Really, in those situations, it's our influence. You know, the way our countenance is and who we are as men and women of God and our character, it should be so influential that it shifts their attitude. And if it doesn't, oh, well, but at least we put the positive, we put the love first and see it in a different, in a different lens. And then I remember... You've said this several times way back, but when people are either jealous or envious of you and and they treat you a certain way, it's because it they might I'm like it it might be because they like what they see That's or they right. desire what you have or mm -hmm. desire to to be it, you know, to emulate your character. So sometimes we have to, not sometimes, but we need to discern what yes. really is going on. What real, what is the real sender? That's right. Okay. That's right. Is, is it spite or is it envy or is it jealousy or is it just somebody who just wants to be like you because you're influenced, you know, and they, they desiring, how do I get there? How do I be, how do I change, you know? Right. That's right. And, and and to be honest, it's a, it's just a conversation. And think if people would just give you the benefit of the doubt, you know, um, you know, maybe you have seen someone that's done that before because you had to get a judgment from somewhere. Judgment comes from things that we have experienced, people that we've been around, um, you know, and, and, and sometimes we've made an absolute about something was just an experience that you had. And I think uh, as children of God, we should always be open uh, to have true fellowship and conversation with people. Let's talk about it. You know, um, I was, um, I got a lot of things I probably want to say about this. Um, uh, today, tonight I was, um, I was Ubering and I had, I picked up this gentleman. It was one of my last riders. And I picked up this gentleman that was near uh, the neighborhood where I where I lived in. I brought somebody from the airport over into the neighborhood I live in and then picked up this last person. And as I was going over there, I missed my turn. I wasn't as familiar with the area or whatever. Sometimes GPS is just crazy anyway. And then they sent me this message. Why'd you, why'd you, <laughs> why you pass up the apartment or whatever? And uh, I said, well, I'm coming. I'm on the way because I know they can get fly with you sometimes. And so I turned back around and when I got into the apartment or whatever, they had already told me to look for certain, you know, um, uh, markers or whatever. And so I pulled up and I saw him walking to the car with an attitude, <laughs> with an attitude had a head down. I said, all right, Marilyn, you already know they probably either late for work or something. So gentleman get in the car and uh, he said, um, you must not be from Dallas. <laughs> and I said, no, as a matter of fact, I'm not. He said, you ought to get out more. You ought to get out of the house more. I said, you know what? You are so right. I do need to get out more. And uh, he kept talking. He said, yeah. He said, I'm not from here either, but I get out and I learn the city so that I know when I'm driving around or whatever. It was like he wanted to pick a fight, but I just couldn't. He was too cute to be picking a fight like that, too. And so anyway, I said, you are absolutely right. I do need to get out more. And the more that I put that fuel out, the more he calmed down. 
and he turned into a, I had a 45 minute ride with this judgmental man and y'all probably about 10 minutes into the ride, his whole attitude shifted. The whole thing changed. He told me about places to where I can go here in Dallas to get out and have a good time. He said, Marilyn, get out sometimes and, and go out and uh, uh, check out the city. And I said, so I guess you're not from here. He said, no, I'm from Chicago. He said, but I know my way around the city. I said, how long you been here? He said, I've been here since 1997. I said, boy, you, you a native here now. And so anyway, what I'm trying to say is he started out with a strong judgment. You know, one, he wanted me to hear him and get him wherever he wanted me to get him right away. And I'm thinking, well, buddy, it's raining outside. And I don't know what time you got to get to where you got to get to, but you got to leave room for incidentals there. But as we kept riding, we had the most beautiful conversation going over there. But if I had judged him and started making comments and fly back, getting that last lick like he was, it probably would have been a horrible ride. Because I've had some horrible ones that came off on me like that. And some of them, I left them where they were. <laughs> left them right there because I knew it wasn't going to be a good ride. That's how judgments can start. It can start from a conversation that's already going on in a person's heart, in a person's mind. And it may not be what you think it is. It's just what you're going through right now. So as he kept talking, I kept hearing, I said, so would it be um, uh, an honest assessment to say you got an attitude? That <laughs> you got attitude sometimes? He said, well, sometimes, but not all the time. I said, well, maybe sometimes or whatever. But y'all, I had to get okay with myself before I said that to him. I didn't want, I didn't want no more fire coming out. But I want to go to this scripture here, y'all, to kind of kick off this conversation tonight as we're talking about conversations around judgment, uh, there's a, a, a scripture in 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15. And, um, and this is how you can put fires out as you're dealing with people every day. It says, for no one can lay a foundation uh, other than that which is already laid, which is in Christ Jesus. He said, now if anyone, let me make sure I get to this right, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, one each one's work will become manifest. He said, "For the day is this will disclose it because it will reveal be revealed by fire when you're put into certain situations, and the fire will test what sort of work each of you each each one has done. If the work that anyone has built." is on a foundation, on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. And to me, the reward is peace. If anyone builds a work, work is burnt up, he will suffer loss, though, though he himself will be saved, but also as through fire. And all this scripture is really saying is when you, you know, it, it, it goes back to true discipleship to me. When you go through um, 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 a, a true pruning, a true uh, cleansing um, from the heart, you know, all of that. There is a firm foundation that's laid down in you. One, that God is not judging you. You know, you've made a decision to come to him so that he can make those wrongs right in your life. And you lay this all at the altar with him so that your foundation may be clean. And it helps you to not judge other people. You know, he said, whether it be on gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, meaning whatever. If you if you thought that, that you know, uh, what I did for somebody else, you know, I need to get compensated for that or, you know, um, I'm paying you for driving me. Y'all should get compensated for that. That doesn't mean anything. You know, uh, th those are works that you're doing. But if you don't have any love behind what you're doing, it's really for not, it's really not even, it's not going to stand. That's why a lot of times I, I keep telling people, if you know your covenant right, no man can do anything to you, but you do have to honor and obey what the Lord says, okay? What the Bible said, no man takes my life, I have to lay it down. No man gets to take anything from me because my foundation is laid solid upon God. One, if I've done wrong, I know without a shadow of a doubt, I need to go before my father in a in a in a in a posture of repentance. You know, uh, if I have throughout the day, you know, maybe had misconduct 
or whatever. Maybe I done blew off or one man shot a finger up at me the other day and I was driving. And I said, well, he got to give account for that. I'm not going to have to give an account for that. But if that had been me, that thing would have bugged me all day long. And that's what he talks about. He said, because if it, it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of works each one of you does, that thing would have had me worried all day long about godly, I ain't not shooting no finger at that man. That man was just trying to get over to another lane. But with some people, because they don't have a foundation that's laid down in God, that means that nothing bothers them, uh, that they are not, um, um, they they are not, um, I don't know what word I want to use. Um, they don't have a concern about whatever it is they've done. They're not going to try to change those way. But those of us that are in Christ, when you do something wrong, you're going to know it. Yes. I heard Bishop Noah Jones say that yesterday. He said, it's something about a child of God. When we do wrong, we know what we have done wrong. He said, and also when we hear truth, we know truth when we hear it. He said, because spirit speaks the spirit. That's the foundation, sin conscious. That's the word I'm, I'm looking for. He said, because when your spirit is taking control, he said, everything that you do is being judged by the spirit. That spirit goes in and makes intercession for you. That's why a lot of times when you wake up in the morning time, if you have done anyone, anyone wrong or if there has been maybe a judgment that you made or maybe you didn't give somebody the benefit of the doubt or, you know, maybe you, you know, made a rule over something before God even said, that thing is going to eat your conscience up until you go make things right. Unless your conscience has been seared and you have uh, kind of dipped into pride and I ain't going to say nothing. They don't say nothing to me. I ain't going to say nothing to them. You steal something. Your conscience ought to eat you up until you stop doing whatever that is. Y'all, one day, um, when we talk about judgment, okay, um, one day, um, I had let my, um, y'all, I watch your kid. These kids be doing stuff. I had let my granddaughter use my uh, my my black truck for a little while. And um, one of the things when y'all start using the vehicles, you're going to have to start taking care of stuff on the vehicle. You got to get the oil change. If I'm going to let you use it, you need to get, you know, keep it up or whatever. And y'all, the tag, it went out on the car. The inspection sticker went out on the car. And I said, okay, label, it ain't no more than about $57. Go get the inspection sticker. Good as they felt, they done went and got an illegal inspection sticker put on my car. And they had the nerve to tape it on top of the other one. And when I saw it, I said, if you don't get that up off of my car, get that up off of there. Well, granted, we were just trying to make it. No, 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 no. Don't start living that kind of life. I'm not even judging you on that. Just don't start living that kind of life. Because when my truck get in pounds, ain't none of y'all got no money to go over there and get it out. So just don't do that. So I'm just saying a lot of times there should be, see, they have no conscience about that. That didn't bother them because if it would have bothered them, they wouldn't have put that tape on top of <laughs> Got me riding illegal and stuff. So, but that's what I'm talking about. Conversation around judgment. And we're having to be very, very mindful about just how we go about doing, you know, certain things. So this is one of the things want to kind of, as we talk tonight, uh, there are some, I think some difficulties in having a conversation without being judgment. One is that we're not being active listeners. And we're not listening carefully and we start judging a situation. Now, in that case, I don't think that I had to stop and find a reason as to why y'all did what y'all did because it was illegal. Just don't do it. I can understand if, you know, we whatever, it was illegal. Just don't do that. And then respecting others, even when they're talking, you know, sometimes we, so before we start judging a thing, before you start putting an absolute on something, respect the other person to get their thought or their, you know, opinion out. And maybe I could have dealt with that a little bit different. I could have let them kind of talk themselves into getting that tag up off my car or whatever. And then speaking from your own experiences instead of a generality, you know, I'm going to share this and then I'm open up the floor for everyone. Uh, I got a call today from one of my girlfriends and she was just, just really, really distraught about a, um, a situation that was going on. Um, she had a she had a girlfriend or a friendship or whatever, and the girl was going through a difficult time in her marriage. And as a Christian, um, she wanted to let her know that she was praying for her, uh, praying that God would, you know, restore the marriage or whatever. And the lady got upset with her. She got upset with her and she said, I asked you not to be praying for us. 
you know, about this marriage and why would you go and pray for something when I told you it was already over and different things like that. And it had her in tears. And she said that really, really it got me in my feelings a whole lot. And y'all, I was very careful even as to, as to how I answered, because I don't always want people to, you know, think that, oh, she got an answer for everything. No, let her sit maybe in the moment for a while, because I'm not quite sure what the surround, I don't know all the details of it or whatever. But I waited a moment, then I responded to her later. I said, yeah, that can be a little bit of a challenging thing, I said, because uh, sometimes people don't want you praying for them because they've already made up their mind as to what they want to do. And they know that when you pray, it may change things. And then again, if they don't already got in a relationship with somebody else, they sure don't want you praying because it's going to push that other person up out of there. So kind of put yourself in their shoes. And if they ask you not to do it, that don't mean that you don't pray. That, that just means leave them alone in the space of where they are and go do things in your private time. Just when you're lifting up other people's marriages, lift up theirs, whether it be that they, you know, come into good understanding with each other, that they have good relationship when it comes down to raising the children. Find other ways to pray for them without being so general with it. Well, I'm just praying that y'all get back together, this and that, because you may not know all the details that may be surrounding it. So sometimes even when we pray, we have to go a little bit deeper into a place of understanding as to, all right, so uh, tell me about what's going on before you uh, offer up your you know, solicited advice about something. Listen to them first. You know, I don't just offer prayers to people anymore. Kind of tell me about what's going on. Share with me what's on your heart. And then from there, I can have a little bit more discernment of what needs to be done. So let's open up the line. Let's have conversation on this tonight. Have any of you found yourself in situations where uh, maybe you were the one that felt like you were being judged or uh, maybe you were being um, confronted with something or maybe somebody was judging you? on a matter, you know, or on uh, whatever may be going on. So let's just kind of get the conversation rolling and then we'll go there. If anybody would like to share. Ms. Marilyn? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and that happened to me um, a while back. One of my friends, that same scenario, what you just said, I, I reached out to her because she was going through a difficult marriage and going to divorce. And I reached out to her and I said, I wanted to pray for her. She called me and I offered my prayer. But she said, don't do that. She said, I love you as a friend, but you don't know what I went through. And I'm like, well, I'm here for you. She said, but please, disrespect my wishes. Don't do that. And I and I just left alone. So I'm like you, Miss Marilyn. I'm driving. I'm sorry. I'm like that, you know, what you just said. You know, you have to respect people's wishes. You can't judge, you know, what people are going through. Because we all going through something. You know, we can just be a listening, you know, ear. But I'm like you, Miss Marilyn. I learned my lesson. I don't, yeah. you know, I pray for people in private. My private prayer for God, you know, I don't reach out and say, can I pray for you? Because all it's going to do is cause problems. So that, that's true what you just said. So thank you for making that point. So that gave me confirmation. Look, Ripper, just, just pray for him from a get. Oh, my God, we got fluids. I'm sorry. But um, thank you, Miss Marilyn. Yeah, I, I think it's good to get, get a little bit more information or allow the person to, um, you know, come to you with a prayer request. Um, about, you know, whatever the situation may be going on. And believe it or not, when you do that, you may have had a preconceived thought about it, but when you allow them to share maybe the reality of what may be going on, it'll give you a little bit more insight. Not that you still won't pray for them, but it gives you a little bit more insight into what's going on because people get really offended when they think that you're taking up for someone that has possibly done them wrong or whatever the situation is, because a lot of times we just get one side of the story and it takes God to make the um, uh, a true um, uh, revelation about what's really going on. Because people are going to tell things from their perspective, from their corner of the world. And sometimes it may not be, um, you know, as adequate as you, it may not be as even as adequate as they think it is. It may be just the way that they are feeling right now. So Miss Regina, I see your mic is open. Okay. Maybe she just has it. Anybody? Yeah, I had it in, okay. in my back pocket. I'm sorry. It's okay. Walking around working. Okay. All right. Anybody else want to share tonight? No wrong conversations on judgment. Have you ever 
you know, um, thought about, you know, maybe you have been being, you know, maybe judgmental and didn't know it, um, not, you know, wanting to do that. Um, uh, you know, uh, th there's a little something I was reading tonight. It says conversations don't, um, a judgmental conversation. I mean, I'm sorry, good conversation. Don't leave you feeling judged. And sometimes people do feel like, you know, I, I felt judged with that conversation. We we didn't even have a decent, um, um, I don't know, um, I'm not going to say debate or just uh, dialogue with something without me leaving that feeling judged. Like, I, I feel like every time I turn around, you you picking at something with me, you know, or whatever. So any, anybody want to share tonight? Ms. Anita, yes, ma'am. Hi, good evening, everyone. I find myself um, choosing my words very carefully in today's society because we have so many timid and seem like everyone is in their feelings. Oh, everything hurts everybody's feelings. And I, I listen to what the individual is saying. And I choose my words based on who I assess them to be and what they can't, what they can and cannot handle because everyone can't handle truth. They can't handle real. And then that just may be my truth. Yes. But I try to get a clear understanding. So I ask a lot of probing questions before I respond to make sure that I understand what the individual is saying, what's on their mind, so I can give an intelligent and adequate response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I try to, and this is just me not judging anyone, but my, my peer group, we're not in our feelings we can be real with one another. You know, if we out of order, hey, look, girl, you know you wasn't supposed to do this, 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 and this. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we respect one another. Mm -hmm. And if you are my friend, you love me, you're going to be truthful and honest with me. And if you are my friend, you're going to respect my feelings and know how to present the case to me to where I can understand it respectfully. And, and, um, you know, so I'm mindful about people that I deal with because I've been told and, and I've got, I'm not where I want to be and I'm not what I used to be, but I'm a, I'm brutally honest. And like I said, today's society can't handle that. They yeah. cannot handle that. And then I thank God that I have that relationship with my father uh, to if I say something to someone and I sense that their feelings is hurt, then I will take the time and take the initiative to go back to them and thoroughly explain and to where they are level to an understanding and, and come down to their level and, and mm -hmm. not think anything of them. And, not, and, and that may be the wrong word to say, I mean, a wrong phrase to put it, come down to their level, but to their understanding. Because everybody's understanding is different. Mm -hmm. it, it's different in every situation. You know, we can go through the same thing, but I may not yet be where you are. You may not be where I am. Mm -hmm. So it's about respecting one another listening to them and respecting what they say. It's not about if you agree with it. It's about yeah. you having respect for another individual. Take you out of it and put them in it if you're trying to help them. You got to mm -hmm. take you out of it because it's not about you. It's about mm -hmm. them. And, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and that's the way I've always been. I respect one's feelings. I respect their space. I respect their mindset. I respect their now. I may not agree with it, but I respect it. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's good. 
That's good, Anita. Um, uh, because I like you said, you said um um that's that's where they are right now. Exactly. And I think yes. I think I think that's what we have to come to a, a, a early resolve with when you're having conversations with people. And I'm I'm having to learn this too. Um that that's where they are. Yes. And to be careful, what they say, be quick to hear and slow to speak. Yeah, slow to speak and quick to listen. I mean, what is it? Yeah, slow to speak and quick to listen. Or is that is that, is that how I go? Yes. I think. Yeah. <laughs> slow, slow to speak and quick to hear. Okay, quick to hear. Okay, yes. And and that's where I am. I had to get that way. And then when some people will look, oh, she'll know it all. Or she thinks she knows this or she thinks she knows that. So I, as the older I've become, I've gotten wiser in that area because yeah. it's not that I know it all. As my mother say, I can just look and assess the situation. I, it doesn't have to bump me upside the head for me to realize that's what it is. I don't have to walk in the fire to know that it's the fire. I can look at you. And not being judgmental, but I can look at you and tell if you are the one that I want in my company or not, or if I want to be in yours. And yeah. I go my way and I allow you to go yours. Period. And and it's and it and that's not anything negative about anybody. We're just two different people. We run in two different circles. We think differently. And, and our thoughts are just in different places. And that does not mean that I'm better than you. I don't look at you being better than me. You know, because when you've been raised differently, then your morals is different from someone else's. And you will clash. Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, well, you think you this. You don't, no, 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 I don't. But see, I had a strict mother. I came up with a strict foundation. And it's not to say that you didn't, but I know what works for me and what mm -hmm. works for me may not work for you. And I mm -hmm. have to do what worked for me and you do what worked for you. And, and it's you, just that simple. And you know what? I think what keeps us out of them bad conversations, you know, we used to hear this scripture all the time when it came to dating. Don't be unequally yoked. Come I on think now. you can be un I think you can be unequally yoked on jobs. I think yes. you can be unequally yoked on in yes. friendships. I think yes. it can be a lot of different ways. That's and right. I think there's always um, a lesson behind it all. Uh, but but we have to, you know, take the, the hot temperedness out of it and realize that everybody's got a right to feel the way that they feel. And sometimes we got to go yes. through hurting stages yes. in life to get that message, you know, because you don't yes. want to be falling out with everybody and, you don't want everybody falling out with you. So sometimes we have to go back and ask the important question, God, what is it that you have yes. to say about this? Now, we've done all this talking about how I felt and, you know, all of that. And at the bottom of it all, why am I feeling like my works are just dropping to the ground? Yes. Maybe because I used uh, another type of foundation to try to deal with it versus the love of God with it all. Sometimes the love of God is, not to give a response at all. If it's going to lead to, you know, bad conduct and behavior, sometimes we just can't respond at all. Not right now. Cause one can yes. two walk together if they if they don't agree. And if I know that from conversations that we've had, we didn't have four, five back to back conversation and none of these conversations we're agreeing upon, somebody gotta learn how to bow out out, out of it and wait for better times for us to communicate with one another. So yeah. great one. And then, yeah. And sometimes less is better. It, you know, and everything does not require response. Exactly. Because silence is golden. By you not responding, that's a message in itself. And, and like I said, everything does not require response. You know, and a lot of times I have to be mindful of my looks, the way I look when someone is talking because my look, will be the response and sometimes people because I read I'm the type I read body language and and if you are an individual and you are an observant individual then you will read body language and that body language and the facial expressions will give you your answer but Amen. you have to be observant you have to be observant and then understand and then we live in a society today that we don't have an understanding 
we listen, or should I say, we hear you talking, but we're not listening to what you're saying. That's true. That's true. And we'll give a response based on our understanding level instead mm -hmm. of understanding the dialogue. You know, we just, we, we quick to give a response to show how intelligent we are or just whatever, you know. And, and, and then the response sometimes make you, put you in a state to where you probably shouldn't have said that, you know. Mm -hmm. Just let it, just let it be and just let it go, you know. So it's like, I'm, I'm mindful. I, as I've grown older, I have just learned a lot of times to keep my mouth closed. <laughs> I, I yeah. keep my mouth closed because I know, I know me and, and disrespect is something that I'm not going to tolerate, but I also know that I've gotten too old to be stupid and, and to, and to put myself in a situation that's going to cause disrespect or, or a mindset that I choose not to go in because I have, I have control over me and self-control is something that I'm always going to maintain. Amen. And, and, and when you know that a situation can cause escalation, then you bow out and you mm -hmm. let it go because a lot of times it does not mean we have to be right. You know, we, I will need my peace. And, and that means a whole lot. And, you know, but as, as we grow, then we learn. Amen. I agree with you there. Definitely agree with you there. Uh, Miss Nikki, I think I saw your mic up, your hand as well. Miss Nikki. Great yes, good evening. Good evening, Anita. I'm at Nikki. <clears throat> Listen, this is a good conversation tonight. I am enjoying everything. Y'all are dropping some really good points and nuggets. And um, I just wanted to add, Miss Merlin, what you were saying about um, being equally yoked. You know, that that is really so true. And it's so funny because you know, I know a lot of times, you know, people may not look at it like that, but you can really be um, unequally yoked with your own emotions. And and I'm saying it because, you know, a lot of times when you respond to certain things or um, I want to say, you know, being judgmental or it could be judgmental, but sometimes um, you're responding from a place of where you were unequally yoked with your own emotions. You know, sometimes emotions can take you there. And, you know, that's why the Bible say, you know, don't lean onto your own understanding because your heart is deceitful. And so depending on where you're coming from, you know, your emotions, they fluctuate, you know, so you may respond to certain things that are sent to trigger you when, as you said earlier, you know, as a child of God, you have to know when that, okay, are the, you know, these emotions right here, this is not being sent from God. So how am I going to mm -hmm. respond to this? Because mm -hmm. the other day a situation happened and um I, I was I was going to get some food, yeah, and I was just so hungry. It had been a long day and I had did a, a, a call in order. So I got there and um, you know, by the time I got to the car, I didn't check my food, you know, when I went in to pay for it and pick it up. I, I got, you know, to the car because I was like, you know, I'm ready to get to the house. I am hard I haven't eaten, and, you know, so Anyway, some just told me to look at my food. So I looked at the food, y'all. The food was, it was cold. It was completely wrong. It was not, you know, what I had ordered, you know, none of that. So anyway, I was like, okay, look. So I went back in there and um, I, I took the food back in there and I asked, you know, to speak to a manager because uh, the waiter, you know, that, um, you know, she, I don't know, her, her vibe, you know, was just off, you know. So um, I asked to speak to the manager about it. And um, talked to her. And the man, when the manager came over there, y'all, I was like, you know, I explained to her, I was like, hey, my order's completely wrong, you know, um, it, this, that, and the other, whatever. So, you know, she came off really rude about it, you know, when I was like, oh, you know, so since she was rude about it, I said, you know what? I, she didn't offer, like, okay, we can, you know, remake it or, you know, well, well what's wrong with it? You know, it looks fine to me. And I'm like, <laughs> It looked fine to you, girl. I, you know, so anyway, I was just, I was really just caught off guard by how the way she was, you know, handling the situation. I said, well, you know what? I, I just, I just want my money back. And she said, well, typically we don't give, you know, um, money back or whatever, you know, or we can just, at that point is when she said, oh, we can remake it. And I was still at the typically we don't give money back because now you don't get my money back, you know, so I just, 
it, it just went it went way left field. It didn't have to go there anyway. She ended up giving my money back, and after you know we had exchanged a couple words, and then you know I got to the car, and you are so right, you Miss Marilyn, you will know. First when you are a child of God, you know you, mm-hmm. you will know when you have went too far. You know what I'm saying? Because a spirit of conviction will come up over you. So I was so upset, y'all, and I and I, I got to the car. And I crunk my car, but I just couldn't even leave because I sit there and because I felt like, you know what? I, I said, you, you didn't you didn't even have to act like that. You didn't that look at you. I got your money back. You hungry, you mad, you know. Show up with but I was still my emotions had me on the fact that they were they didn't take accountability, you know, they were the one who were wrong about it, you know, but then they tried to make it look like I was wrong. You know, yeah. but then I responded to it out of emotions, you know what I'm saying? Because I was hungry and I was mad. You you telling me you can't give my money back, you know. So I, I just had to sit there. You were stuck on that part. I was stuck <laughs> on that part. And that's what our emotions would do to us sometimes. So sometimes, you know, when you it's how, how you receive things where you are currently in your emotions, because I, I, I went in there hungry. Okay, so that's all I was thinking about. I wasn't thinking about like, well, you know, the kitchen may have been busy. They may have been really busy. They may have been shorthanded. You know, we don't think about those things when we are already set in that, that where we are, you know. And so our emotions will get the best of us. So sometimes when people are treating you a certain way, you know, you may look at it as if they're treating you a certain way. But sometimes something else has triggered you. And where yeah. are you at right now in that current emotion, you know? So it just, it's just one of those things, you know, you just have to, you, ha- you have to, first of all, that's why it's so important, you know, to just pray about everything, you know? And that's what I'm just really, you know, just getting in the habit of doing, praying really yes. about everything, even over my thoughts. Lord, how should I, and and how should I respond? Or yes. how should, did I hear this right? You know, did this come from you? Like you really have to sit, in that moment so that you can really hear from God and not just react because it is so easy for things to look away when it really might not even be way it's that way you know or it's so easy to see oh well this person is treating me you know this kind of way but when really it might not even be like that like where are Mm -hmm. you right now you know and so this nursing has really taught me, um, you know being a nurse you, you, you have to critically think Yes. And, um, and, and, and a lot of people, you know, I don't mean to say it like that, but a, a lot of people really don't know how to critically think. And I really didn't think, you know, a certain way until I got, you know, in this nursing field. And I'm saying that to say, like, you are constantly uh, assessing your patient as a nurse. You have to constantly assess them. You have to critically think like, okay, where well, if they're acting this way, what is causing this? You That's always right. have to treat the cause. You know, because whatever is causing it is having them to show these signs and symptoms of this, that, and the other. They showing signs and symptoms that they have a youth uh, like their delirium, but the delirium is coming because they have a chronic UTI. So what am I going to do? Am I going to treat these symptoms that they're having, the fever, the frequent urination, or am I going to treat the cause of this, you know, instead of the symptoms, treat the cause of it. So when you get to the root of the cause of what is causing this, that, and the other, things will flow different. So you have to really, you have to critically think about everything and then just, yeah, I don't know why I just went there, but God just took me there. But that's, no. just, that's, what, that's, that's just what I'm saying. Let me just stop because I'm going somewhere that, else. <laughs> but, that, but that's good. That, that made me think that critical thinking part, I think before we start judging, we do need to have a skill set to know how to critically think. Because if we're just stuck in our own thoughts about something, Nikki, it can cause mm-hmm. it to get out of hand, except thinking about, you know, you know, like with the lady at the restaurant. And I'm not saying I would have dealt with anything different with that, but it could be that the lady register been coming up short. <laughs> and it's like, now I got to <laughs> refund this money. And, you know, when, you know, sometimes it could be, you know, just people in life making judgment. You don't never do nothing right. And you'd be amazed at how people hear a uh, conversation that you have that don't have nothing to do with the matter at hand, you know, Absolutely. and then being able to give answers to things. Cause like you, like y'all, I've been, when I was watching the residents and there were a couple of times when, you know, uh, a family member had died on the operating table 
and they had to go back, well, who's going to go tell the family now? You have to think through that stuff how, before you go have a conversation with that family. You got to start thinking about, you know, the reactions, what are the questions that they're going to ask, and, you know, because uh, those are difficult things. They're going to be dealing with the laws. You know, you're on the other side of the table, and I think we do have to do some critical thinking when we do that. When you come in the company of anybody, I think we have to do that, you know? So... I don't, I don't see, I think that was a lesson learned, Nikki, uh, about mm -hmm. how uh, we can't be in our feelings all the time. And I love that word you use, being equally yoked with your emotions, being in touch with your emotions, because your emotions can be, you know, out of sync with God. And they're they not yoking up with him either. You know, we justify why we're doing something, but it's not linking up with the spirit of God. You know, so... Yeah. Uh, anybody else want to share tonight? Anybody that hadn't had an opportunity to share just yet? Miss Faith, I see your mic. Oh, I'm sorry. So, okay. I don't have anything um, like a story or anything. Nikki, that was good. But I was just thinking, I know sometimes hormones can get in the way. You know, uh, medically so. Where if you're if you unbalanced, you know, you're not balanced, you're not synced in, your your hormones, you can be like just all wired up, just go off. Because you know, I think men have you know their days too. I'm not just trying to target, you know, sisters, but I think men have hormonal imbalances as well. And sometimes you know their hormones can just be off and. I've seen women, you know, just cry for no reason. And sometimes it could be, you know, something they've gone through or whatever, but it could be also a hormonal imbalance. And I think sometimes we need to be aware that that might, you know, that is taking, taking us emotionally because of that imbalance. So I just wanted to bring that hormones sometimes can can awfully take us off kilter sometimes if we don't if we don't control it or you know see about go to the doctor or whatever to see why we feeling if we're going off on people all the time you know um you might have a little bit too much testosterone in your body or something you know you just just you know kind of snapping at everybody all the time why are you doing that you have to analyze it could it be you know, something that's chemically going on in my body. So right, it, that's right. That's why right, Kathy could be stressed. Mm -hmm. that, that's good faith. <laughs> Y'all, I think about in the scriptures, um, you know, like when you read the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, do you know they tell the same story, but they tell it from a different perspective? You know, Mark tells it from whatever his profession is. Luke tells it from a, a physician's perspective. Um, um, Matthew tells it from a tax collector's perspective. Everybody got a different perspective. And if you don't understand the language that a person speaks, you're not going to get them. Y'all, I have been, you know, the, the more I'm coming into the knowledge of, of who I am as a person each and every day, um, it's helping me to make better decisions as to um, you know, when people come into my company, you know, am I, do I need to give a response here or no? Uh, because sometimes we just don't have things in common so that when we do start talking, it's going to kind of throw the conversation off or whatever. And I'm having to, uh, to learn that, uh, even in, you know, still pursuing this dating arena, uh, I'm having to come to that place to where I understand you're not always going to have the same conversation because y'all are not interested in the same things. We don't have commonality of how we grew up. And to me, when you find people that y'all have things in common, it makes for an easier conversation. You know, uh, you may have someone that, you know, uh, they, they talk completely over your head. I don't think you ought to try to jump hoops to try to catch up with where they are. I think you need to let things just become very natural. You know, because this 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 statement that it said good good conversations don't leave you feeling judged. And I can say sometimes when I've had conversations with people that it has made me feel a little judged, even to the point to where feeling judged can make you want to hide. Have you ever been around individuals where y'all having conversation and you you're like, I don't fit in this equation nowhere, you know? 
that's not a time to dummy down or uh, feel like you're inadequate. It may be just you don't have conversations for this type of a crowd there. You can go across the street and meet somebody else and you will talk for days over there with them just because y'all have a place of commonality, but good conversations. And I think that's what we should be praying for with everyone, whether it be when you talk to your, your, your husband, your spouses, whatever, that we have good conversation, God, uh, me and my boss, I pray we have good conversation that nobody leaves there feeling judged. Nobody leaves there feeling like, you know, they didn't, they were dismissed or ridiculed or laughed at or anything like that. We pray that we have good conversations with one another. And I think that makes for a better camaraderie. That'll, that'll even make a difference as to how much we have conversation with each other. Because if I feel judged every time I come around you, I'm just probably not going to um, you make you make you a priority to be around you or anything. Miss Nikki, yes, ma'am. I was just going to add also to Miss Aware, Miss Marilyn, about the conversation of also bringing like awareness. You know, sometimes a lot of people are unaware of how they, you know, their demeanor come off or how they're acting or, you know, and sometimes you can, it's not always, it's never what you do, it's how you do things, you know, so sometimes you can bring awareness to somebody in um, a, a godly way, you know, uh, in, in a positive way, you know, because sometimes if they've never been told, a lot of times they, you know, you don't see that, you know, you're doing this thing wrong, you know, so a lot of times, you know, when we feel offended by someone or feel like, you know, that we're being judged or, or vice versa, you know, it's, it's so easy to be quiet and to not speak on a thing. But sometimes that is your moment to speak, you know, mm -hmm. go ahead and speak up because the person that is acting that way or doing that sometimes really are unaware, like they just know one way mm -hmm. and that's it. So it's about bringing accountability and awareness, you know, and sometimes then they'll turn around and look at you like, I thank you for that. Like no one yeah. has ever told me um, that I was handling things this way or I was treating people this way or whatever have you, you know, they'll bring it and say, they will show how they appreciate this. So sometimes when in those moments when it's hard and it seemed like you need to be quiet, sometimes that is an opportunity to go forth. You never know how, what God will bring out of you to deliver um, or that person, you know, to deliver something in the way that it needs to be delivered. That's true. That's true. I believe that too, Nikki. I believe that that we pray for things like that, that, you know, we have good fellowship and conversation uh, with one another. And I think the more you uh, have opportunity to pray among the people that you are around, or even just praying in general, because you keep running into hiccups and different things like that, you know, Lord, I pray that you give me good discernment too, you know, when it's time to talk and when it's time to be quiet. Uh, because he kind of like uh, the gentleman I was talking about this evening. I don't know. It had to be the spirit of God that made me feel comfortable with saying a couple of more things to him. And I could tell that he was a little hardcore, but I don't think he was hardcore to his heart. I think sometimes um, people are hiding how they really feel or. You know how it is that you just trying to keep one foot in front of another and you don't need nobody trying to judge you or nobody trying to figure out your story and don't try to tell me who I am or what I'm doing. I think it takes a heart of discernment to come in and stop people in the middle of all of the thoughts that's running through their mind and bring peace to it so, so that we can have a good conversation because it may not be everybody may not be trying to judge you. Some people are just trying to have conversation with you. Does that make sense? Just trying to have conversations with you. Amen. That Anybody makes a else lot of can... sense. Thank you. And I'm having to learn that too, when to uh, know when to turn it on and turn it off. Now, when I'm not feeling good or whatever, you can have that one. You know, I'll come back another day. But when I'm like, you know, this is worth the engagement and conversation. And when you think about being in a relationship, you're going to have to get to that point to where, okay, we're going to have to have good conversation with one another. Maybe today is not the day to have it, but to also show some empathy toward what the person has already spoken. If they have shared, you know, maybe they felt judged when, when they told you about something or whatever. 
you know, you may try to get a point across and say that, no, I wasn't judging, but they may feel that, well, that's what it seemed like to me. That may not be the time to keep escalating the conversation. It could be just the time to say, you know, I'm sorry that you felt like that. And, um, yeah, and, and thank you for bringing that to my attention. And then have a conversation with it later, because whether you know it or not, when a person feels judged, they don't let that go. That thing is still on them until we finish this conversation. Because every time they come in your company, they're going to still feel like that because something was left behind undone. So I hope I'm not rattling with that. Um, anybody else tonight? I'm talking about good, uh, having good conversation with people. Okay. Yeah, Miss Marilyn, Miss Regina, like yes, um, at work, I have to choose, like she was saying, I have to, like Anita was saying, I have to choose my words for my employees, too. I have to be real careful. But one and then I have to, and then I also have to tell just this one main one, that everything that comes to mind is not meant to be said. Like you have to, I mean, literally, you have to think before you speak. And as she, as she just pops off and says different things to people and just say what just comes to mind. I mean, I could tell her about herself, Miss Merle, she would never like me again. But I choose, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I choose my words. I choose not to, to be that way. And that's why I just be trying to tell her, you need to think about other people's feelings. Think about, you know, because for one, you never know what some people have going on at home. And thank you, uh, Nikki. I appreciate what you were saying because like I, I'm in the fast food industry. And so many times people have like those call in to uh, pick orders and they'll come in and get the stuff and they're looking at us mean and they're acting a fool pace and saying it said it was ready. Well, I apologize, baby. You're not talking to us. I don't know. You're talking to maybe some AI computer system somewhere. I don't know. You know, we we would have told you, no, we're cooking chicken. So it takes 15 minutes to cook. So, no, it's going to be a waste. So, you know, people don't always understand that it's busy and that, like, a lot of the times people are doing the best they can. You know, people are so quick to come back and, you know, complain to where, you know, a lot of times, you know, you don't always get people that come back and say, you know, you did a good job. So I really appreciate that when, you know, people take the time to come back and call and tell me, you know, how my employees did good and like they were busy, but, you know, I just I just look over that and and I something was left out of my order, but they were so friendly and so positive that I don't care. I just want to, you know, I'm not mad. I won't get anybody in trouble, but I just want to make sure, you know, I, I did let you know that yeah, I was missing this out of my order, but I'm not mad because they were so friendly and, you know, and they were doing the best they could, you know. So it's good when people recognize that because the uh, the. Fast food or the food industry is not easy. It's not easy at all. It's very stressful. But I just mainly have to, you know, also, you know, like I said, choose my words too, going back to what you're saying, with, with my employees just because. And you just, you got to be mindful because for one, like you just never know, you know, what somebody's got going on at home. Yeah, that's so. true. That that kind of takes us to that thought about please don't judge me. You know, we were, we were right. using that phrase, um, you know, don't judge me, teach me. And a lot of times when we hear those words, please don't judge me, it's, I believe it's a plea to not make condescending conclusions. You know, uh, don't, like Gina's saying, you know, don't, don't judge the food industry because don't, don't put everybody in the box together, but it could be some truth to it. But at the same time, people are saying, don't make a condescending conclusion. Uh, because this is maybe you don't know how many times we're going to hear uh, complaints all day long and we just kind of sick of it right now. But for the most part, I think what people are wanting is they just yearn to be listened to. Let me share with you, you know, what's really going on. And it, that's why that's why I was saying at the beginning of it, uh, the scripture in First Corinthians to make sure your foundation is solid. That's why it's good to make sure you prayed up before you go on the job. Make mm -hmm. sure you prayed up. Because whatever your foundation is, is what's going to show up, you know, the patience within you, the fruit of the spirit, all of those things. And even when we do find ourselves uh, maybe in a judgmental form, someone, someone's pleading with us or, or someone's pleading with us to say, don't judge me, just listen to me. I think it's very important that we do stop to hear 
all right, let me hear the story. When somebody calls me and tells me something about somebody, that's the first thing I go to. Let, let them tell their own story. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time when we tell them, we tell them from secondhand information and we don't always have it all. So as Christians, what we want to do we want to not be judgmental of individuals, but we want to hear the story. And don't and don't start thinking about what you're going to say, you know, when they finish because you're trying to find something wrong with the comments that they're making. But truly listen to what they have to say, because sometimes people just want you to hear the whole story and for um, to help them to make sense of what's going on. As Christians, people really do look for our advice with things but not if it's going to come in a judgy way. You know, you didn't even hear me. You just made a preconceived notion about what you thought it was. That's why, and then they'll follow it up. That's why I don't go to church now. That ain't why you don't go to church. You just didn't like what I said, you know? So anybody have any comments on, on that that part there? Miss Marilyn, I was just going to add, um, a good friend of mine, well, I won't just say a good friend, but I mean, he's someone that I've been knowing, you know, for years. Um, and he uh, he's a trainer. And so uh, he had made a post and um, and I, I know, you know, the type of person, you know, that he is a very professional uh, guy or whatever. But he had made a post. And um, like I said, he's a trainer. And the post was like, you know, um getting people to come to the gym so he was like he called it the it was a hashtag big back special oh and, they you know, using that word too much they are they are using that and so I told him I said um I mentioned it to him and I said you know I, I like what you're doing you know I'm not hating or nothing like that I said but that delivery I said you know and what what even made me mention it to him because a lady and I were just talking earlier um that day um when we were working about some things and so and, and when I saw his post I brought it to his attention and I said you know I understand you know what you're doing I said but you know that can really come off wrong I said because yes. number one to a woman you know body shaming they have made that so like I mean, just, just so convenient now, like just so easy, like just easily doing it. And it's not okay. I said, because you don't know what it really takes to get somebody to just get, just build up the motivation to even get to the gym. So when you take something and make a mockery out of it, you know, that can look bad. You know, you don't, don't use that as a promotion. And I know that he, he's not, like I said, he's very nice. He didn't probably didn't mean nothing by it, but they're using that too freely. And it's already hard enough for people to get up and go to the gym anyway. And then a woman, you know, when a woman put on, on makeup or when she want to make herself look nice, it's for her to feel good, yes. you know? So when you take something, even with, with, with weight, I, I, I know some beautiful um, you know, women that are, are bigger in size, you know, it's not, and small, it doesn't matter how you look big, small, little, tall, whatever, you know, when you, it, it takes enough for a person to just show up for themselves, not for you, but you don't know what it takes a person to show up as them, show up as their best self, you know, so I just, after I brought it to his attention, you know, he was like, Nikki, I really didn't even think of it like that you know he was like I was just looking at it you know just trying to get people to come to the gym but he said as you break it down like that he said you know I will take the post down you know but, he, but I was like you know I'm not telling you how to run your business or nothing like that but I just want to bring it to your attention yes. that that could really hurt somebody feeling mm -hmm. very insensitive yeah I think yeah. they're taking that Risa Tisa thing to using it they, they they seem like they 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 appear to be trying to use it for their advantage, but you're not gonna get people into your gym calling them big backs or whatever right. whatever that word is. So that's that's a level of a lack of um, the, uh, sensitivity toward uh, someone, and that's a judging, like you say, that's a a form of judgment and, and you could be doing the same thing, just do it a different way to where it'd be a little bit more appealing to others, you know, coming in. Same thing with us in the body of Christ. There are some things, you know, we, um, you know, some things we see uh, that, you know, um, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this, but they don't tell you what you should be doing, okay? They're pointing out everything wrong that you're doing. Even I hear this in some ministers delivery 
Uh, the only thing they talk about is what you should not be doing. What you should not be doing. But they're not trying to tell you about what you should be doing. And I'm I, I'm like Bishop Noah Jones. He said, why did you have to go through all of that? Why didn't you just tell me how to live a life in Christ? You went through all of those measures to tell me what I should not be doing, but you missed the whole message of love. Because that's what's going to end up winning people to Christ is love, not judgment. Because nine times out of 10, people already know something needs to be fixed on them. Something's wrong with them. But if you're going to keep pointing at it and picking at it and probing at it, they're never going to, because they don't want to look at it themselves. And if you over here making fun of what it is, you know, maybe I, you know, wear my clothes some kind of way, or, you know, I'm just not understanding this thing about God, you know, teach me what I should be doing. Teach me how to get into these discipleship classes. Why don't you even, like one of the things that I used to do, um, you know, being a person on the front line like that, you know, when new members are coming in, they're just, you know, they're just either joining the church or they're uh, first time visitors or whatever coming in. You have to be careful not to put a judgment on anyone because lots of you don't know if they've ever been to church or they've been to church all of their life and something that happened to them. It's always good to stop and get fresh information to have conversation with them. So take everything down to a dummy farmer, you know. And let's treat everybody just with the love of God. And eventually, as the people continue to feel warm and welcome enough to come to you, they will continue to start telling their story. That's when you start bringing about a different way to handle certain things, you know, or bring about correction with things. Because you can really, you know, um, I've seen a lot of people leave church and never come back. Never come back because of statements that are made. It kind of go back to the conversation. And I want to kind of close on this one. The conversation that Regina had at the beginning of it, where she talked about um, during an Easter speech, uh, the pastor made a mockery of her lilac dress. And he talked about it before the congregation, you know, and like it was a Jezebel kind of thing or whatever. Um, I think that, uh, um, there, with with us, what, what what we're teaching people to do is to uh, not hide when you go through experience like that. When people, you know, do something, go talk to someone else. Let them know how you felt about how the person may have made you feel, and to bring credit because it sounds like her mom may have kind of smooth kept smoothing things. Now I'm not gonna keep smoothing things over for the pastor. Because if you're that insensitive toward the people in your congregation, you're going to run them off. And there's no sense in me trying to keep going back correcting that. But if it is something that I really, truly love and I truly care about, I'm going to bring it to your attention. That didn't feel good the way that you did that, you know. And even the, the, the way that you brought uh, that before the congregation, was that supposed to embarrass me? And it probably did, unless you just so rooted in God to where you just don't let things or just rooted in confidence with yourself. So you just don't let things bug you. But I can only imagine within the church setting that a lot of people have done a lot of things that they're a little, little too judgy with that. And you're missing the point of love. And you wonder why you're losing people from your congregation. Anywhere love is not abiding. Anywhere understanding is not there. People are people have a tendency to move around where they do feel loved or where they do feel, you know, respected or whatever. Uh, anybody have any comments on that as we get ready to close tonight? Y'all are being quiet, Miss Sheena. No, <laughs> no, no words tonight, Miss Sheena. No thoughts tonight. So I'm just kind of listening i know um in hr it's hard to not judge um, especially during the hiring process and uh, working with managers um it's, it's kind of um, hard to not to, to not judge you just kind of have to be an active listener and, and um and and have um good valuable resources but i can say just on a personal note um um, sometimes I feel judged by, um, 
old associates by the way I talk, the way I move and the way I act. And it's just because um, I might have matured in certain areas as far as, you know, the way I talk and the way I move. And I might not have that same appetite for that kind of conversation I used to have. So I, I tend to get judged um, based off that, which is fine. Um, just long as, you know, um, I'm respected and I, and, and when I feel that way, I've always, I'm a firm believer in encouraging those around me that, you know, Hey, um, this is a, you know, judge free zone, you know, um, you know, and just try to encourage them how they, you know, how they can get, you know, get here because it's, you know, sometimes a person just needs someone to listen to and to, to uplift them, to get them where they are. You never know why that person is being judged maybe they're stuck in somewhere in their in their life where they're trying to get somewhere so um I um I'm a, I've always been the person where I try to put myself in other you know people's shoes and try to understand um where they coming from and and um not to judge because you know both of us we can't be judging each other somebody have to have to be the better person but um I just learned um I just kind of learned to be very active, active listener and, listener. and mm -hmm. uh, utilize my, my resource. But um, overall um, I um, I'm just in a space right now where I'm just um, learning and, and growing and, and um, taking in as much nuggets as I can as possible. So. I love it. That's good. Uh, that, that made me think about there's good judgment too, Tina. Uh, especially, you know, if you're working, you know, in, in the positions where you have to make decisions about um, how to protect the company, bringing the right people in, vetting people properly. And I think that judgment has a lot to do with the ability to combine uh, personal qualities that a person have with the relevant knowledge that you have an experience of being an HR manager or, you know, different things to help you to form a good opinion or to make a good decision, uh, I think that has a lot to do with the core of, of leadership uh, because a lot of times we ignore uh, different things um, because we say we don't want to judge them or whatever, you know, but some of that stuff is uh, character. When a person shows you their character, um, you're able to form a more um, a valid uh, opinion about different things. Uh, to interpret whatever evidence is there, or whatever, so that you can make good judgment. And then sometimes it's just a matter of, Lord, help me when I cannot see um, um, what needs to be done in this. Help me to form a uh, a formulated opinion. Because a lot of times I, I have to do that uh, even in ministry. Um, a lot of times I'll see different things and I'll see behaviors that are going on. And I have to stop and think, now, is that a character flaw? Is that a is that something that they're going through or whatever? And then not be too quick to uh, um, judge the whole thing to say they ain't no good, this and that. But there, there are often times where I have to put pieces together, you know, the history of a person so that I can form a, a good opinion. And then at the bottom line, I just got to use some good judgment. I can't judge. I cannot make a formulated decision about anything when I don't have enough information, you know? So a lot of times you got to be comfortable and okay with it. Sometimes you're going to get it right. Sometimes you won't, but you definitely will learn from that. You can't stay stuck. What they say, while well, halt between two opinions, you know, either you're going to make this tree good, or you're going to make it bad. You're going to make a decision about something or not. And I think we have to ask God for, wisdom on how to make good decisions about things. We want to make the best decisions about a lot of stuff now, but that stuff can be costly in the long run. Who you marry, where you live, you know, where you work at, you know, all of that. Asking God for some good judgment. God, see what I cannot see, you know, and ask the right question. Lord, reveal anything that needs to be revealed. So, yeah, you know. I, th I think for me right now is, um, with managers with um not judging them how they how they um want to pay um certain people when they bring in so with me I had a meeting with my yeah. boss with salary I have managers that are their chiefs executive and they feel like they can break the salary band just because they want to bring in 
certain individuals. And I mean, um, I mean, I have to say I have to put my foot down and, and, and let them know that we have a budget that we have to, you know, stick with. And you have uh, managers who want to bend the rules a little bit. Um, and so um, I, I think um, that's kind of one of the, the big chunk of the things that I'm working with right now and and just trying to get a lot of policies policies in, in, in place so that we all could be um, on one page. But I, I think you, you have that one person that, that always want to um, misjudge and um, pay a person this and, 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 and that. But me, because I, I've switched jobs so much here, um, I thank God for the job that I have because I can be able to help people and explain and advocate for those as to why I feel like they should get the salary. Sometimes I have to step, step back and evaluate the situation and, and um, look at maybe the degrees or experience and um, look at why I feel like they should get the salary. Um, I've, I've seen managers where they try to underpay certain managers and I'm, I, I believe in, um, I believe in um, what is it? Um, not equity and inclusion, equity and inclusion, but I believe in um, um, so what I do is I like to look at the, the, the people that we have already with the company. I like to look at fairness. Um, you have people that, that came that that's been with the company that have a PhD. They didn't come in making that. So I don't believe that this person should come in making that kind of money. You have yeah. people. So I, I have to sit back and evaluate that. And I have to fight for that. Even if I have to have my director in order to sit with me as a witness to listen in on that, those type of conversation. Again, that comes with you know, um, best judgment and, and just evaluating the whole situation. And I think this, since I've been with this company, it's been one of the most um, um, greatest challenges that I've been. And I thank God for it every time, because it's just teaching me more and more of becoming a um, leader and making good judgments on things. That's good. And Sheena, that also goes back uh, to even let you know why you may have gone through some of the things that you went through so that you could have a level of compassion, um, uh, empathy for people, and then also to stand up for uh, the rights of others as well, you know, and come with a formulated opinion or formulated um, um, conversation around that so people can understand it, you know, that it's not fair. We want to deal with equality and fairness here. So sometimes you have to speak up and say that, be an advocate for other people. So I do believe that God places us as the body of Christ all around the world on different jobs and different places so that we can advocate for people that may not know, may not have the right words or the right speech or attitude uh, to get what it is that they need. So I think God takes us through lessons to learn so that we can stand in the gap for other people as well. So yep. thank um, you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Joe, do you have any final words? We're going to get ready to dismiss tonight. So any final words that you have for us? Uh, you know, and I, I just want to say this has been great conversation. Just listen to the hearts of all in the room. I, I would say, and I've said this on several occasions, above all, cherish no opinions about you, about yourself, others thinking of what other people's opinions are of you, what really is important is what do your father, how does your father look at you? That's important. Look at yourself the way God loves you beyond measure and go from that place, you know, and that's, that's where we need to be. Um, as we walk through all the, the, the things that's going on, they're going to continue to go on. But when we have miracles, see, a miracle is a place where there's no judgment. The judgment can't exist in miracles. It's no place there. And what is a miracle? It's a, it's a thought system based on love, not a thought system based on fear. So what are you saying? Let's walk in love, no matter what. Amen. I love that. Um, and I want to leave a scripture with you guys tonight. And because it's, it's the word of God that we stand upon. 
uh, when we are making, um, you know, trying to make settlement in our heart and our mind about different things. Am I being judgy about this? You know, what is the right thing to do about this this one here? Uh, Matthew 12 and 36 says, I tell you on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word that they speak. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. We have to give an account for that. You don't have to give an account for anything anybody else does, but you do have to give an account for what you do. At the end of the day, before I go to bed at nighttime, I have to make sure my conscience is clear, Yes. you know, about um, whatever the matters of the heart, whether I think I was right or whether I think I was wrong or I was justified in doing whatever. Because when I go to bed, the Holy Ghost is not going to let me rest. Yes, until sir. I bring peace to this. Remember, it's about laying that firm foundation uh, to where you 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 build up things according to uh, the 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 heart of God and the love of God, so that when you come in contact with mankind, that that's all that's being exemplified when you talk, when you walk, uh, when you make decisions. I should not be basing my decisions on what you did to me or how you feel about me. Everything I have to give an account to those things. All these things are gonna be, you know, laid before God at the end of the day. And y'all, I like to rest at nighttime. I don't like to have to stay up wondering, God, did I say something? Did I do something? You know, whatever. And I believe what we should even ask ourselves tonight, even before we go to bed, uh, you know, Lord, if there's anything in me uh that um is causing offense to you, Lord, reveal it to me. You know, help me to see things through clear lenses. You know, if it's the children, help me to see things clearly. If it's my family members, help me to see it clearly because I want to have right relationship with them. And through that, sometimes the conversation that we've had in times past, maybe we just can't have those kind of conversations anymore because above all things, I want to have peace with them. Amen. Amen. Miss Faith, do you have any final words? I know she's trying to get ready to travel. It was a great conversation. You know, I just, I mean, for myself, I think that um, as I mean, all mature from where we are, that um, those things about judgment, how people think about us, as long, like Joe says, as long as we have our right relationship and what you were saying as well with Christ, and we are still humble enough to hear him or hear the spirit when we might, you know, we might have some judgment or we might have, you know, those thoughts that are not pleasing that are subject, you know, to repent, to turn, yeah. change. Um, but, you know, right now, I, I really don't care. <laughs> you know you you know how old people use they just say whatever comes out their mouth no i don't want to be like that but right. my attention is or what i'm looking at for myself is not so much what other people think about me it's mm. what i think about me in terms of what my father thinks about me and and um, I think that we'll be okay if we keep that, keep him in, you know, of everything. And uh, I just wanted to say something to Sheena. I, I'm really proud of you, Sheena. And I hear the growth in your conversation, you know, and and um, I know sometimes it might be difficult in that HR realm because I've, I've seen it all you know, salaries and, and, you know, higher than what you think, lower than what you think. And normally what we get paid is less than what, you know, you all, like, we extend to others. I put it like that. And so just stay encouraged and continue to grow and I'm evolving. And I, I hear it, you know, in your voice, in your conversation, just want to encourage you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love it, Faith. I love that. Uh, I want to leave us tonight. Uh, there's a prayer um, that I posted in the page here. It says, uh, pray a prayer about judging and being judged. It has helped me to understand that I need to focus on you and your precepts as set down in your word. 
Please, Lord, creating me not only a clean heart, but a heart that does not judge, not others. Don't judge myself. Allow me not to hear the devil's voices in my head telling me that others are thinking this way or that way about me. Help me to see things clearly in Jesus name. So I leave that with us all tonight. Let's uh, kind of think about the conversation that we've had tonight. And, and to be honest, who we are really wanting to please is to please our father. And I think it makes for good relationship with other people as well. So until we meet again, I want to say thank you to everyone for joining in. I hope you guys get a chance to come back with us on next Thursday. I'm not quite sure what the topic is, but I know it's going to be good. Hope you guys will join back in with us next Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m. And be sure to invite others to come in as well. So until we meet again, y'all have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful weekend. And we'll see you again next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night.